I'll remember nothing of what I say today. Just remember that the Lord is our shepherd. He is the one who is good and uh, he will lead us through every circumstance of our life. So the well-known passage is taken from John chapter 10. And of course, it's where Jesus speaks of himself as the good shepherd. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and he will go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. For I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And then it just goes on to talk about some who went away from Jesus then saying he was demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said there, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon can a demon open the eyes of the blind? What a privilege it is to come and worship with you this morning in a place where we can see each other, at least not do all that we've been able to, but hopefully that's not too far away. Certainly singing God's praises together, how wonderful that will be. But you know, we have known, haven't we, through these 15 months or so um, of um, coronavirus, 16 months, that the Lord is our shepherd. We just heard of a, a wonderful servant who's gone home to be with uh, her master, Maggie, and we thank God for her life and her witness. A, a lovely, gentle witness, a, a funny woman as well. She loved uh, humor and uh, she loved pulling people's legs, but there was a depth of love for the Lord that I, I sensed in her. And I thank God that I've known her through these uh, latter years of her life. The Lord is the good shepherd. He is with us through all the changing scenes of life. He promises to lead us, to guide us. He longs to have a personal relationship with us. I love that video there, The Good Shepherd, because it talks about a personal relationship with people in all kinds of trouble who are broken, who are weeping, who are struggling, uh, who perhaps feel they're insignificant. 
But that video was saying, no, everyone is significant to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves and longs to have a personal relationship with us. If you have here this morning, I, I think most of us have, you know, I don't know if we all have, but if not, then may we all, by the end of this day, have a personal relationship with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. May he be your Lord and your Saviour. In Psalm 23, that wonderful psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The psalmist David knows the Lord as his shepherd and in turn is known by him. Philip Keller likens human behavior uh, to sheeps. He says, we've got a mass mind or crowd instinct. We all have our fears like sheep. We can be timid like sheep. We can be stubborn like sheep. We can be stupid like sheep. We have our perverse habits. But despite these characteristics, Christ chooses us, buys us, calls us by name, makes us his very own and delights to care for us. Philip Keller in his book, A Shepherd, looks at Psalm 23. In Isaiah 53, verse 6, we read that all we, like as my little sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have uh, gone to uh, different ways and we've got all manner of sheep and we've got some lovely black and white sheep behind our house mum uh, by the side of her house has got some Jacob sheep uh, if you've seen Matt Baker's program the last four uh, weeks on uh, was it more four I think it talks about him going back to his parents home and he and his wife and the children going different parts of the country to buy different types of sheep, Herdwick sheep. Um, I forget the others now, some of you might remind me, but to Scotland uh, and to the Lake District and I think into Snowdonia in Wales as well, Welsh black of course there. And uh, they are all manner of sheep and we, if you like, are all different kinds of sheep here this morning. We're from different flocks, although the same one we could argue as well, uh, one in Christ Jesus. Horatio Spafford says in his uh, wonderful uh, hymn, Horatio Bonner, sorry, I should say, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I am, as I was, sorry, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. He goes on to say, I heard the voice of Jesus say, behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. And I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. We've heard some testimonies on the Good News for Everyone uh, conference this weekend, uh, formerly the Gideons. We've got magazines for you to take out today. Please take them as beautiful uh, photography and scriptures of John's Gospel and uh, a number of the Psalms as well, verses from the Psalms. Please take them. But we've heard wonderful testimonies on Friday evening and two meetings yesterday about people where the light of God has come into their lives through the Word of God. That is often a little Gideon's Testament, a little red one. Some of you will remember, maybe a lot of you, uh, being given one in school. And how that little uh, item has revolutionized lives of these people who were in prison, desperate, involved in drugs, would shoot someone just to protect their territory and so on. Another man who, who just felt the only way out was to take his life and the Lord reminded him as he was moving out from his parents of this little testament that he found and he wondered why he kept it. But of course we know why uh, he had kept it uh, because God had his finger upon him. So a, n a number of wonderful testimonies. You know, Jesus 
is the gate. He talks about it here, and we've got um, some plates on our wall, and this one is called the Protector. I love the uh, Welsh Collies. I suppose I, I grew up with them, Border Collies, and the sheep. And, of course, here's the gate where Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. And here is, I don't know what his name is, Shep, maybe. We'll call him that for now. But here is known as the Protector of his sheep. Beautiful dogs, intelligent, uh, protecting their sheep, working for their masters uh, faithfully. Jesus gives direction by leading his obedient sheep. In Psalm 23, I quoted the beginning of that psalm. I will uh, bring you beside still waters. I will restore your soul. In the Middle East, I understand, shepherds often lead their sheep rather than driving them. In this country, we often see, and I grew up on a farm, we would often drive the sheep. But in the Middle East, I believe that the sheep uh, follow you. Well, I mean, if, if you have a bag uh, and you think maybe there's some food in it, like Carolyn one day, she was walking down from Betis towards Berry, and of course, all those sheep were following her in the fields because they thought that she had some food to give to them. So then they were following her, but only because they thought they, there was something in it for them. But you know, that's the norm within the Middle East. You know, Jesus is always there or here for us and attentive to his sheep. In Psalm uh, 1 to 1, and just a few verses from there, it talks in this way. Psalm 1 to 1, this wonderful one, a song of ascent, I will lift my eyes to the hills, goes on to say, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. Do you believe that, friends, this morning, that he's watching over your life? Do you feel he's been with you these past 15 or 16 months when things have been tough? Some of you much more than for me, but for all of us, our lives have changed significantly, haven't they? But do you believe the Lord has been your shepherd through that time? Do you believe he's walked with you every step of the way? Because scripture tells us that, and if we are here each Sunday, then surely we must believe that, that the Lord is good and he is our shepherd, even through the darkest times of our lives. And that's why maybe I was uh, guided to the Gideons, because I love the word of God, but also how the word of God impacts people in the darkest times of their lives. In Psalm 23, verse 4, David says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff that was shown on the video, the first uh, clip, uh, will comfort me, will strengthen me. Jesus that promises to be with us through all the changing scenes of life I've just mentioned. Jesus also... I've just mentioned, gives direction by leading his obedient sheep. Thirdly, Jesus saves his sheep. In verses 9 and 15, it says this way, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and he will go out and he will find pasture. And then in verse 15, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life, for the sheep. What a saviour we serve. What a good shepherd he is, that he has laid down his life. As I say it, I can't imagine how he would lay his down, down his life for me. What significance do I have when we look at the great creation of God or any one of us? We might ask, why God? Why me? Why have you shown your love and your affection upon me, upon us here this morning, us simple folk? What is it? Well, we haven't earned it, but Jesus has given us everything that we need for abundant life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes 
on him or in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has provided a means by which indeed we may not perish, but like Maggie, have everlasting life, have that assurance. And I'm sure Maggie was a joyful person to be with as people visited her in those final days. I didn't have that privilege, but I can imagine how she would have been knowing that she was going to be with her savior soon. Sad that she was leaving her loved ones behind but ready to uh, go into the arms of her precious Lord. Jesus elsewhere says, he has many I am sayings, doesn't he? I am the gate, I am the good shepherd, I am the way and the truth and the life. And in this passage, which we just read, I've just read, Jesus describes himself, as I say, as the gate for the sheep on two occasions. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. Um, And then it goes on in verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Earlier Jesus had said, no, no, if you go over the wall, that's not the way to come in. It's through the gate. And it says there's a watchman posted at the gate as well. It talks about a watchman and a shepherd and a gate and entering in. Elsewhere it talks about that gate being narrow and the way of life of pleasure being broad. But there's one way to enter in through the good shepherd. So, Mary Jones, who has farmed, I'm not sure if she's, passed away now or not, but she farmed in the Mouthach Mountains around Dinas Mouthy, a beautiful place around Aaron Mouthy and that part of the world. And here she's written some little devotional books called, uh, this one is Spiritual Lessons from a Sheep Farm. And uh, she and her husband and family farmed in that beautiful part of God's creation. It talks here about the shepherd And it shows a picture here of a shepherd with a big staff or crook in his hand. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's almost as big as him in in this uh, example. And uh, it's good to uh, get the sheep, I suppose, out of trouble and to guide them where they should be going as well. But she writes here that a shepherd with mountainous pasture land once found that during a snowstorm, the icy winds had driven his sheep to the very edge of a precipice. Behind them, deep snowdrifts blocked their retreat. In front, the sheer drop yawned. The only way out was to cross a narrow ledge overhanging the precipice. So the shepherd's boy carefully and quietly drove the sheep onto the ledge. While the shepherd stood on the very edge of the precipice to encourage them along and keep them uh, from falling. A sudden rush from the sheep given to panic or a gentle push could have sent him hurtling down onto the rocks below. Why did he do it? Why risk his life for creatures he well knew to be thoughtless, slow to show their appreciation, however careful the shepherding and good the feed, none like horses or dogs? Why did the shepherd persevere with them? They were his. He loves his own. Does anything ring a bell then when I said about thoughtless and uh, so on? It does with me anyway. And uh, I'm, I'm that person that is thoughtless and careless at times. And uh, that's the way we are, aren't we as sheep? But Jesus loves us. That's the wonderful message. Are we listening to his voice and paying attention to his call upon our lives. There used to be a record label, I don't know if it's still going now, probably not, but his master's voice and there was a dog looking up uh, into, um, what's the, my, what you call it, these big things. And uh, obviously listening, um, there the idea was listening, I suppose, to the music, but his master's voice was the actual brand name. And uh, that is the key, isn't it? Are we listening to the master's voice. Are we attentive to it? So Jesus calls us next 
to be attentive to his voice. In verses 14 and 16, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Again, in this conference, we've been reminded of the worldwide uh, Christian movement of people from Sweden and from Canada and Serbia and Gibraltar and many other places as well, which I can't remember now, but all, all the comments coming down of people encouraging one another and saying thank you for the fellowship and so on, just reminding us that we are a universal work, a worldwide movement uh, of faith. Even though we may be in the minority from what Jesus tells us, uh, but nevertheless, there are Christians throughout the world who are following in the footsteps of the Good Shepherd. So Jesus calls us to be attentive to his voice with all these other voices and things happening around us. For the shepherd's voice comforts, guides, strengthens, and challenges. He knows his sheep. He knows us all and all our funny ways as well, and still he loves us. And it says that his sheep know him in verses 3 to 5. Another hymn, uh, as you've noticed, uh, often I will uh, quote hymns because that's the way God speaks to me when I'm preparing messages and so he gives me lines or phrases uh, from his word and I suppose they're hymns that I've been brought up with as well uh, in the uh, Methodist church. Um, in my early days, 359, Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild restless sea Day by day, his voice is sounding, saying, Christian, follow me. Then it goes on to say about the disciples, or apostles, hearing Jesus' voice by the Galilean lake, turned from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for his dear sake. And then about the worship of the world, Jesus calls us from this as well. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store from each idol, whatever that may be with any of us, from each idol that will keep us saying, Christian, love me more. It goes on to say, in our joys and in our sorrows, through all the changing scenes of life, Jesus calls us. And if we will listen to the master's voice, uh, and respond to him, then individuals, families, and communities, plus nations, will be impacted and change for the good. In this a Diary of Revival, uh, 1904, talks about Evan Roberts and the movement of God wonderfully moving across this nation 116, 17 years ago now, isn't it? a long time ago, but God has richly blessed our nation. And I believe he wants to richly bless us again uh, today. At times it's possible that Evan Roberts, who if you like was the leader of the movement, God worked through him. Um, at times it's possible that Evan Roberts himself did a little too much pushing. He found it hard to understand that anyone would eventually not take the step from mental ascent to active living obedience, a step that had totally transformed his life. Evan was convinced that the way to national revival was through the church, and the way to revive the church was through the individual. Each one of us here this morning challenged to us, isn't it, to revive the church. What will we do about that? He realized that God was not looking for new methods primarily, but for new people. As Tozer said many years later, he consequently saw that new people often needed new methods, or as Jesus put it, new wine into new wine skins. Jesus calls us to be attentive to 
his voice. And finally, Jesus promises abundant life to all who will follow him faithfully. In verse 10, it says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may, that we may have life and have it to the very full. I am a God of fullness, of vibrancy, of diversity. I am a God, though, who is unchanging and who loves each one of us here this morning and loves all whom we love and all who we work with and all we interact with in business. He loves us all. He promises abundant life to all who will follow him faithfully. In Psalm 23, verses 5 to 6, you'll know that well, don't you, that uh, he prepares a table before us in the midst of our enemies and he anoints our heads with oil. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Life in all its fullness. My cup overflows, says David the psalmist in Psalm 23. Life in all its variety, its diversity, its color and richness. Peace and righteousness, restoration, lack of fear, comfort, goodness and love. All these wonderful things are offered to us if we will but follow faithfully the Saviour. He doesn't promise us an easy or always straight road. Well, yes, not always straight really, is it? Um, Although it does say about straight, I think, in Scripture, but you know what I mean. There are tough times, and some of you here have suffered greatly in your lives, and the Lord understands that and knows that and loves you as he loves all of us here this morning. He knows our stories He has written them before time, if you like, even in the womb. So our daughter, Bethan, is going to give birth to another lovely child. We don't know boy or girl just in three or four weeks' time. But God knows that little one. We've seen the scans, as as you have a number of you, of people in your family and friends and so on. But we've seen that. And even sometimes you can see the little heart beat and so on. But God knows that child already before we know as family we will rejoice soon that all will be well we pray Um, but God knows and understands he is our good shepherd he is promises abundant life and I love that picture this is of the hero Jesus is our hero the good shepherd so there we are shepherds we call him again little lambs just lying down by his side. That's the picture we have of the pastoral psalm, Psalm 23 often, don't we, of resting by these waters there just rippling by in the background and hills. And Dave, I'm not sure if that's somewhere where you want to take us in future, but I'm not quite sure where it is. So there we are. Um, But he is the God who loves us and provides for us. Bless you. Um, so he, if we will spend time with the Lord daily, reading his word, praying, living according to his will and purpose, then we will enjoy a closer walk with our Lord. And finally, uh, a hymn that speaks to me. I love the hymns of William Cooper. Um, very sad, tragic life uh, in in many ways. He struggled with depression and thought of ending his life, and yet there was a real sense in which he walked closely with the Lord and was a a great friend of John Newton as well. Um, All for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. What peaceful hours I once enjoyed, how sweet their memory still, but they have left an aching void the world can never fill. So return, O holy dove, return, sweet messenger of rest. I hate the sins that made thee mourn and drove thee from my breast. Well, how does he finish that hymn? So shall my walk be close with God, calm and serene my frame, so purer light shall mark the road that leads me 
to the Lamb. The Lord is our shepherd. He promises to lead us through all the changing scenes of life. He promises to give us direction. He promises to save us from our sins, from the consequences of death and, and hell and uh, all evil. Jesus also calls to us uh, to be attentive to his voice. He says he's interested in us and he loves us. And finally, Jesus promises abundant life to all who will follow him faithfully day by day. Just a moment of prayer and then Rob will just lead us in a final song, an act of worship. Thank you, Rob. So just pray for a moment. Thank you, Father, for your precious word. Lord, we don't know how our witness comes over, none of us, whatever you are calling us to, but we just need to be faithful. We thank you that you are the faithful one. You are the unchanging one, as Rob has always, already led us in worship. You never change. You are faithful even if we are, we are faithless at times. So we thank you, good shepherd. Be our good shepherd, I pray. Come into our hearts. Come afresh if we need a fresh anointing of your goodness upon our lives. Come into our hearts if it's for the first time, even though we may be a good person, but we've never said yes to you, Lord Jesus. Come into our heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in our heart for thee. May it be so. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.